The biggest lessons that I've learned marketing online for the past 10 years, I've got quite a few. I'm gonna share several um, things that we've kind of learned over the past 10 years that have, um, you know, that that have that has helped helped us move along, that definitely educated us. Um, you know, like I always say, you never fail, you really just learn. So these are just some of the things that I've learned uh, over the past decade of uh, marketing full time, you know, on the internet. So let's just jump right into it, guys. So, so let me pull up, change my page here. So the biggest lessons I've learned marketing online, um, I would say first, there are no shortcuts. I remember early on, like when we started, I was always trying to find a shortcut to more leads, shortcut to more sales, like shortcuts. Um, I found out that uh, shortcuts really don't exist, and if they do, it's never it, it never lasts. Um, <laughs> man, I've done some wild stuff back in the day, just trying to just trying to win. Nothing unethical or anything like that, but just just trying to shortcut the process. And and you know what? You just you can't shortcut it. You just gotta. You gotta, uh, you, you just gotta go. Everybody, everybody goes through the process. Everybody. So nobody. Yeah, I went through the process. People before me went through the process. You're gonna go through the process as well. So if you're trying to find shortcuts, it's just not gonna work. Um, and and what I mean by shortcuts, I mean, well, I'll just say this: what's gonna help you is just your development, your personal development, being patient, being consistent, um, and just learning your craft remember treat this like a profession it will pay you like a profession you treat it like a hobby it's going to pay you like a hobby if you try to circumvent the the process it's you know you might lose your shirt okay you might you know you might experience a lot of failure you might you might even have some wins in the short term but it might hurt you in the long term so uh, i would just say this there are no shortcuts just be patient and just follow the process. Okay, and that's one thing that we definitely learned early on. Uh, now, of course, this is like when we first started, um, and I guess after about a year of just trying to do some weird things, even before we went full time, I was trying to shortcut things, and it just wasn't working. And and once we finally started doing the right things, um, things just started happening. And I and I almost kicked myself, like saying, "Man, I should have just been doing it the right way in the beginning." You know, we would have been fine. But again, that's one thing that I learned. You can't shortcut the process. Just follow the process. Listen to what your mentors are telling you. Listen to your coaches. Listen to the people who you look up to. Listen to the millionaires, the, the people that are entrepreneurs who you learn from, that you that you are inspired by. Listen to those nuggets. Hey, success leaves clues. Just duplicate what they're doing and you'll speed up your success. So um, there are no shortcuts. And, and so that's one thing I learned. I also learned that technology changes, um, but people remain the same. <laughs> Tech changes, oh my God, how much is, I remember there wasn't live videos, there wasn't, um, there wasn't all kinds of stuff. I mean, not, now that we kind of just see, you know, um, pretty, that's pretty normal, pretty standard. Uh, but you know, technology doesn't replace, I say all that to say this, technology doesn't replace the people. People are still the same. Technology just allows you to reach more people. But people are still the same. You still gotta share the idea. You still you still have to um, you know, provide enough value to those individuals for them to want to you know, join you in business for them to want to buy your product or service. That still is the same. You know, a lot of times, a lot of people look at marketing and they look at it from a transactional standpoint. Like it's, you know, well, if I do this, I should get five sales or, or they're not thinking that those are real human beings on the other side of that capture page or whatever, right? It just, these are real people. So just treat them like real people. Think of, you know, just be practical with your marketing. Remember, technology changes, but people remain the same. That's never going to change. People are still going to be the same people. Um, we just have tech. We have so much technology now. It just allows us to, man, do so much, create so much. 
I mean, we can create more things now at, you know, easily. Um, I, mean, I remember when cell phones didn't really have HD quality video. When we first started my, you know, my old camera that I think I got back here somewhere on my shelf, um, used tape. I had to record videos using tape <laughs> because the phones, they had, you know, cameras on them, but it, a lot of the cameras didn't come standard with high quality video. So, you know, nowadays my phone, my phone right here has way more power and capabilities and features than my camcorder did way back in 2012. So, I mean, so again, I, but, but remember I use though, I use video to really reach people, to connect with people. And, but throughout the whole decade, one thing I've learned, things have gotten easier. Technology has made things much easier to reach people, to create things and all that stuff, to get more leads, to get more sales. There's a, all kinds of resources, but you know what remains the same? People still remain the same. Nothing's changed there. It's still the same people, okay? Um, so that's one thing I kind of learned. A lot of times people think technology, oh, I'm gonna make my six figures um, this year because this just came out. I mean, it could help, but the main there's still things that you're gonna have to learn there's personal development that you're gonna have to go through you're gonna have to you know create a have a very thick skin as well because of rejection and all that there's still it's still a process that you're gonna have to go through and technology isn't going to replace that and, and remember people still remain the same so that's one thing that we kind of learned as well uh also uh let me look here uh you can't save everyone. Let me repeat it again for the people in the chief seats. You cannot save everyone. And where do I begin here? I remember, I used to, I used to think that. I used to think I'm gonna, I'm gonna make everybody successful. I'm no, I'm, hey, if they're if they're a part of our group, if they're a part of our circle, I'm gonna make sure that they're successful. I almost died trying to do that. I think Jim Rohn said that. It's impossible. I learned that one, you can't save everyone. You just can't save everyone. People have to see it for themselves as well. People are gonna have to want it like you want it. And sometimes people see it and they want it just as much as you want when you first connect with them or, or you first share something. Sometimes people gotta, they gotta cook a little bit. They gotta simmer a little bit. You know, they maybe they haven't gone through enough yet. Sometimes people have to go through some things to really put them into action. That makes sense? It's just people, just humans, just how we are. It's how we're wired, it's in our DNA. And some people are self-starters and they can just go. They don't need anybody to tell them anything. They don't have to go through anything to, to you know, to move forward. They're just self stars Some people are just gonna have to go through things. And then some people are just gonna be flat out lazy. That's all it is. Nothing you can do about it. Some people are just gonna be lazy. They're just they're just not gonna do what they need to do. And, and you know what? You know what? There's nothing that you can do about that. There's nothing that you're gonna be able to do to change that other than provide value, love on them, Make sure that you're providing enough value to the marketplace. All you can do is just, all you can control is what you can control. And that's typically you and your actions. That's really all you can control. Um, if you, as long as you follow the blueprint, follow the process, things will move forward. Um, so these are some things that we kind of learned, you know, just getting started. You can't save everyone. So I don't try to save everyone now. I try to share things with everyone. <laughs> See, there's a difference. I definitely want to share things and I would love to save everyone, but I know from experience now that I can't save everyone because everybody's not meant to be saved because everybody's in a different mindset. Everybody's not going to see, see it like you see it, whatever it is. Everybody's not going to, you know, buy into what you bought into. Okay. And guess what? That's okay. That's fine. Remember, what we do as entrepreneurs isn't for everyone, okay? We can't save everyone. We can't make everybody an entrepreneur. All we can do 
is focus on what we can do. And that's it, okay? So I learned that the hard way. It took me a while to get out of this one. It took me a little while, but I eventually got out of it. And, and now I just, you know, try to provide extreme value, try to help people as much as I can, um, but I'm not trying to save you. I'm just trying to inform you and hopefully educate you on some things. And then you will make the decision when you're ready to win, okay? Make sense? That's typically how I do it, okay? And then of course, multiple streams of income. Um, we learned this early on. I remember when we first started having success online, we first started really making some big money from home using the internet. Um, I remember one day, it just hit me one day. I was like, you know what? This is great. We're making money with this opportunity. Everything is moving. I got, man, we got people hitting me up every day. People are signing up. Things are just, wow, this is incredible. Then it just hit me one day. What if something happened to this opportunity? Hmm. I had never thought of it. Like, what if something happened? Now, we, we, we're here in Las Vegas. We don't have any family members. It's just our family unit. So I, it just hit me. I'm like, you know what? We need to find other ways of how we can make money that can complement what we're already doing, whether it be tools and resources and stuff like that. Because I was using different tools and training. I was part of different communities that provided a lot of training. And a lot of these different tools and resources that I was using had like affiliate offers, meaning if I shared this tool or resource that I'm using every day and somebody else bought it, I would get a commission. And a lot of those commissions, they, they were residual commission. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start sharing what I'm using. That's really allowing me to have a lot of success. And, and that's what we started doing. We started looking at other different ways of how we can make continuity income, um, just money that can go alongside with our primary source of income, N nothing that competed against it, but just things that could complement. I knew that being a entrepreneur online, and if I'm learning things using tools, I know there are other new entre entrepreneurs coming online and they would want to know, well, what tools are you using? Because I would get those emails and those calls all the time. Well, how are you able to do this? How would you make that video? How would you learn that method? How would you learn that strategy? What are you using? That page that you're using, how did you make that? Make sense? So I would start sharing that information and guess what? We started making some significant income on top of our primary source of income that we had. And so from that point on through our entire career, we've always, we've always had multiple streams of income. Okay. We never keep all our eggs in one basket. Let me repeat it, especially if you're full time. I made a video about this. Matter of fact, if you check the, check the description right below in the YouTube video, I might have it linked about multiple income streams. Uh, but, you never want to be, you never want to have one stream of income, especially if you're a full-time entrepreneur, especially if you're a full-time marketer. Okay. That's dangerous. It's extremely dangerous, especially nowadays. Okay. Cause things move business just, man, things just change like every month, pretty much. So you always want to make sure that you're secure finance, you know, financially. And you can do that, especially if you're full-time by having different streams of income. Um, if you're if you're part-time, if you're a part-time entrepreneur, entrepreneur and you've got a full-time job, well, that alone right there, and gen generally that's, you have multiple streams of income. You got your full-time jobs paying you every week, every two weeks or whatever. And then of course you got your, your online business or what have you. So, um, you know, so you're fine. And then once you're, and even if you, if you're wanting to add other streams of income, just make sure that on your business side, of your income, your, your entrepreneurial endeavors, make sure that that's set first, meaning that you at least understand how everything works. You, it's kind of moving on its own. Then you can start adding other streams of income, even for people that maybe are transitioning into a full-time entrepreneurship, you know, make sure your main or your primary source is set, you know, before you, you know, start adding on other streams of income. So you don't get confused and, you know, you don't want to get confused and, you know, overwhelmed with all these different things that you're doing. So that's one of the best ways of how you can definitely do that. So, so multiple streams of income guys definitely does work. Um, let me see. And then last, 
just be happy. Uh, be happy with what you're doing. Um, I Some things that I've learned um, over the years, there's been some things that we've done that I really didn't want to do. And the only reason we did them, maybe because we needed to make um, some income. Um, we needed to, uh, or maybe we were just kind of convinced, maybe we kind of done some things as a favor to other people or something like that. Um, and it has been several situations like that in, in our career over the past 10 years where we kind of done things, but I really didn't want to do it. Um, we don't do that anymore. We, we just don't, we don't do that anymore. If it's something that I don't want to do, something that I'm not really excited about, I'm not going to do it. Um, I don't care what the compensation plan is. I don't care about the timing. Oh, Steve, I'm telling you, bro, if you get in now, I'm, I'm not, I don't care about all that. If it's something that I don't want to do, if, it, if it's something that it's not going to really make me happy because money is in, in general, I mean, it can help make things easier, but it, it, it won't make you happy, especially if you're doing something that you don't like doing. Okay. You don't like talking about, you don't like, oh man, I got to get on this call again and do this webinar. I really don't even want to do this webinar. You don't want You don't want that feeling. <laughs> you might be making money, but you're like, oh man, I just, man, when I get a phone call and I, and I got to take this call and talk about this topic for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it's like killing me because I don't even want to do this thing. Make sense? So whatever you do, just be happy first. Make sure it's something that you want to do, something that you're passionate about. And that's something that we learned over, over the years that we focus on now is that I want to be happy. Okay. If, if I can't be happy, I'm not going to do it. I don't care what the money's like. And, and that's, again, that comes with maturity. You know, uh, back in the day, you know, I would be like, well, we need to do this. So just go ahead and do it. Well, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. So, and so just be smart, set a plan so you can be happy. So if you've got to do something, cause we all have different circumstances. So if you've got to do something, make sure you have a plan so you can be happy. Okay. So maybe it could just be something temporary or what have you. So again, that's something that I, that, that, that I think about is, is nowadays any, any type, anytime we do a new venture or whatever, I'm always thinking about, Hey, do I want to do this? Is this going to make me happy? Do I like this? Do I like talking about this? That's what we're looking at nowadays. So, so again, guys, be happy. So, uh, that's all I got. Hopefully this, uh, gave you a little insight, you know, um, you know, some things that we learned over the years, really over 10 years of marketing full time on the internet. We have not punched the clock on a job for 10 years. Every dime that we've earned, um, over the past decade has been earned from the internet. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, affiliate marketing, network marketing, our own courses and all that stuff. And, uh, and with all that knowledge and all that experience, um, we learned some things. We've had some failures, but I, I hate to say failures. I like to say we've learned some things and uh, what to do and what not to do. So hopefully this was helpful, gave you some, some insights, some things to to look out for as well and um hey again if you like this video give it a like for me thank you appreciate it and also subscribe to my channel right below click on the subscribe button i've got some really cool videos coming uh this year so you don't want to miss them so again thanks for watching this video guys i really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video peace